Hey everyone, uh, Church of SDQ. One thing that I've come to be very weary of is this kind of instinctive trust and desire that people have for leaders and leadership. And not just leaders, but like people to idolize. Um, and it's something that's kind of culturally accepted and even expected. Like you see it in... Um, in young children, you know, this idea of, oh, well, of course, they'll, they'll be this actor or this singer and they'll just go nuts over them and hang posters all over their walls. Um, and that's kind of a thing that most kids do growing up. And I guess, you know, with kids, they're kids, so it, they're just doing what comes natural. Um, but I worry about it when that's something that people think is acceptable later on in life. And I mean, just the fact that children do it um, and that it comes quite natural to adults to do it, I mean, it, it shows that there must be, like, an evolutionary reason, and it makes sense, right? I mean, back in the day, you probably wanted, like, one tribal leader, because otherwise, um, your tribe would get into trouble, and then people would constantly be beating each other over the heads, so you wanted to have one strong leader, everyone follows him, and then he gets clubbed over the head, and the next guy takes over, or he lives peacefully till he's too old and then he hands over the bat and something like that. Um, and, you know, I guess you can have a dialogue over whether that's really, you know, maybe maybe most humans are just weak, pathetic fools and we have to be led by strong leaders. Um, but if that's the case, then I think we're in trouble. And I think the reason why that probably work better in the olden days is, first of all, because, well, we were kind of bereft of choice, considering that we didn't really have the social development um, and the technology, and that would allow us to produce security uh, where we could actually manage those kinds of interactions. Um, but I think it also worked better because it was a small group. And that small group could, in fact, hold the leader accountable. Um, and what the leader did broadly was accessible and knowable by the group. Um, and people understood various facets about the leader that they had picked, or the chieftain or whatever. And they could observe him in everyday life. Whereas nowadays, we really know... I mean, we we hear about the scandals, and we hear about this and that, and we get these little tidbits. But we don't really, we can't really use those very finely evolved senses we have about determining someone's personality on our leaders because they're completely inaccessible to that. So we're left trying to piece things together from what we hear on the news and so on. And that's not really good enough. So I think evolutionarily, obviously, there was a, I mean, that's not what I think. I mean, I'm sure there was a purpose. But I think where we are right now, the role of the leader has become a lot more problematic because it requires blind faith rather than an actual knowledge of the person. Um, and actually, if you look at successful leaders, they're the ones that can simulate that knowledge, that can be the guy next door. They're not really. Bush wouldn't really have a beer with some scummy uh, regular Joe. Um, but they can pretend, and they can have that aura, and they can get the media to portray them in that way. And then it doesn't, you know, then uh, then the fact that they have attributes which should make us shudder, uh, or, well, whether they have these attributes or not, they're portrayed, like, for example, in Bush's case, stupid. For a leader, we should be horrified. But we go along with it, because he seems strong, and he seems like... Uh, like a nice, down-to-earth guy, like a relatable, trustworthy guy. And I think that trust is essential, because that trust is what we were looking for thousands of years ago, and that trust is still what we're looking for. But nowadays, we can't really get that trust anymore. Especially in a political system where a, one of these leader persons, they only spend a little bit of time in the limelight. They don't really put that much on the line for that. All they really have to do is sell out cleverly enough, score enough points while they're there. Um, even if after that you hate them, that's fine. They've, they've done 
done their deed. Um, so I guess the question is, you know, can we transition somehow to something that places less emphasis on leaders? Can we move to a less hierarchical society? But hierarchy, I mean, hierarchy, I guess leadership, this concept of leadership expresses itself is kind of the strongest expression of that very hierarchical drive that humans do have. I mean, it is a question. Can we manage? Can we overcome our evolutionary history enough at this point? And a lot of people would say no. What we have to do is just try to find the best leaders we can and just try really hard to keep them honest. And it's not even like I totally disagree. I mean, we can't just say we're going we're gonna to change everything overnight. But at the same time, I think if we see opportunity where we could lessen uh, leadership from an individual and increase kind of popular leadership or grassroots leadership, we should really look at that and we should consider that and we should experiment with that more. I mean, we don't have to say, okay, we're going to get rid of the president and the houses of parliament, uh, the, the houses of parliament, and we're just going to. We're just going to vote on everything tomorrow. Um, maybe that's never going to work. Maybe that's not going to work without a lot of experience on how to do it and with a, without a lot of learning on part of all of the people that are voting. Um, but in either case, it's it's folly to just to just go and say we're going to abolish government tomorrow. But at least we can have little experiments. We can have workplaces that operate more on those principles. We can have communities that operate more on these principles. We can have families that operate more on these principles. We, are, we can have schools, we can have universities that operate more on these principles. Um, and I think the problem, the main hindrance to that isn't, in fact, um, that it's not possible, that there's really someone stopping us. There's not a military that's going to shoot us all if we do it, especially from the kind of low level. There, there would be lots of opportunities, but it's that people aren't really interested or don't believe in it. They don't believe it's possible. They're not really interested in doing it any other way or getting involved or even really considering the situation. And part of that's because it's so nice to have a leader that you trust in. And I mean, you know, it's like I have people that I admire, you know, Martin Luther King or Gandhi or, you know, the, the Buddha, <laughs> pick whoever you want, they're people I admire, but to exalt them to the level that people often do when they idolize someone uh, is never good in my book. I mean, it's, it's not good for those people as well. It can only guide them wrong, even if they have the best of intentions, um, and all they're getting is, you know, they ask a question, is this a good thing? Oh yes, it's the greatest thing anyone's ever done but it's actually a stupid thing. And then they go wrong, because they're not getting any real feedback. Yes, Martin Luther King was an enormous human being with enormous vision, enormous intelligence, enormous bravery, but he wasn't perfect. I mean, he had those escapades, those extramarital affairs. It took him a while to get into that whole civil rights leader movement, uh, leader kind of position. At first, he was kind of skeptical towards it, um, being the correct vehicle, so that shows that he didn't have some kind of a perfect understanding of the entire world. But the point is, to have that, it, no one does. I mean, that's religious people, correctly, in my opinion, you know, they say, well, no one can have, you know, no one can live up to God's standard, no one can embody perfection, and that's exactly true. I mean, I personally believe no one can. There's no God that does it either. But the fact is certainly no human does. I mean, Gandhi, the other example, you know, what he did with his niece, things like that, and you're like, oh, well, that's, you know, that seems a little bit dodgy. And and then people get delu disillusioned because they had this guy put on a pedestal that was a mile high, and then something comes up, and he wasn't a perfect being. He had a flaw. Maybe it was a big flaw. Maybe it was a very significant flaw that we've judged people harshly for in the past. And then either they go into denial or they become <clears throat> they become cynical 
in not the good cynical, but the bad cynical. They're just like, ah, it's all, it's all useless. It's all for nothing. Let's let's just give up. Let's it's every man for themselves. And they're both not productive, and they're both not necessary. Um, no, people have flaws. The people we admire have flaws. People we can learn from have flaws. We learn that our parents have flaws pretty early on, and we should learn that our leaders um, and the people we look up to have flaws. Um, and also, I mean, another thing of going headfirst for some guy, you lose complete perspective. Um, and that's not a good thing, even if he has, if he's an admirable, uh, an admirable guy. You know, your, fam your favorite political leader, like what happened with Obama. People might say, you know, he he's had a lot of good policies, he sounded really good when he was coming in. Um, and, you know, the fact is that people lost complete sight of anything else. Um, or, you know, so a lot of the early kind of uh, socialist communist leaders that were very charismatic and got a great following. It so happened that in retrospective what they did turned out to have horrific consequences that caused a lot of harm. And in many instances probably they didn't mean it, but that's how it worked out. Um, and that's because people followed them religiously. Um, and following a human being religiously is not good because Whereas there may be some debate about whether God exists or not. Um, there's certainly no debate over whether humans are perfect or whether they ever err. And they do. They make errors. And losing perspective, only seeing one, one view are all bad things. Again, I think, you know, it's very debatable to what extent we can move away from this idea of having someone to lead us. Um, but I think we should try moving away from it as much as possible, see what kind of leeway we have, and I don't think we've really tried doing that. I mean, there have been some tiny little steps, but to say, well, that didn't work, first of all, a lot of them kind of did work, and then to say that didn't work, so we have to give it up, I mean, that's like saying, oh, well, Greek democracy didn't last forever, uh, it was complete bollocks. No. <laughs> we just need to try more things, practice more, and we'll figure it out. But I think we should do it bottom-up, and we should practice these things in places where it makes sense. We shouldn't stake everything on it, then have it collapse, and then spend another 300 years uh, picking up the pieces and then being convinced it'll never work. I mean, I guess the final thing I want to say is there's, there's a difference between just like there's a difference between hierarchical rule and and power and organization, I favor organization, and I favor organization that can even um, compel people what to do as long as it's part of a non-hierarchical system in certain circumstances. Just like that, no leadership doesn't mean that you can't have spokespeople. It doesn't mean that you can't have people that you admire. It doesn't mean that you can't have people that contribute to embodying a movement. It just means that you have to always be challenging those people. You have to always be making sure that they don't, um, that, that you and other people don't give to them this, uh, divine status, which isn't really deserved, then you have to, you do have to tell the part, well, this is the movement, this is the spokesperson who's a great guy, but he's not everyone, he's just one person that is a really good person. And then you just always have to be realistic about it and reevaluate. Um, those are my thoughts. Uh, and, you know, I mean, the Lenin song, Imagine No Religion. I like to imagine no leaders and no idols. Um, I think that would be a very good world. I think a world where we could all speak person to person, have that kind of relationship, rather than than this this idea of always coming up against this superhuman. Um, that would be a productive thing, and it would be a productive thing, especially for people um, to really never get 
that involved and that's impossible but never get that involved in a in another person that they're just going to believe every single word that comes out of their mouth um, and just take everything um, basically on faith uh, because this whole idea of having someone uh, you know like we don't really want to look to human beings to speak divine truth to us I think that's the core message and I think that's something that has happened naturally as leaders got ever higher elevated as the number of people they've led grew larger until they're so high in the clouds that we can't actually see or touch them anymore Church of SDFU, I'll see you guys all later